This is the palette I usually work with, and I know most kids will have, or young adults, or even adults will start out with a, a set similar to this, or maybe something that they've invested a little more money into, but we're going to see if we can make all of this work. Let's take a look at this. If I used the green right out of the palette there, that'll work. That could work just fine. That's a light green. I could use this green. That's a little darker. That'll work just fine too. Now, if I want it to be even brighter than that, using this kit set, what I could do is take my green, I'm gonna put it over here on my uh, surface, my table surface there, and then I'm gonna take a little yellow. My yellow's a little dirty. I'm gonna put that right in there. That's much brighter. So I could work with all those, and that's with this set. Now, if I used my colors here, I'm going to go ahead and clean this out a little bit. Now, if I use these colors, what I have here, I could use a French ultramarine blue or an ultramarine blue. The problem with that is that it has a sedimentary look to it. It clumps together, so it may not give you the effect that you want. And here we want a, a nice bright hummingbird. So I want the cleanest color I can get. If you're using professional colors, a phthalo blue or a Windsor blue, red shade or green shade. And all that means, it's a very clean blue. Okay, so now I'm gonna do basically the same thing, but I'm going to mix my green. I'm going to take a yellow, a Hansi yellow here, or any bright yellow that you have, and then I'm gonna mix it in with my Windsor Blue Red Shade. So let's take a look at that. That's a little darker, but that's more blue in it. So if I take my yellow and add more of that yellow, that becomes brighter. And I'm going along the lines for right now. I can always change that. I'm just gonna go back and forth like this for right now, and then bring some of that color down into the tail. That's not a whole lot, it's just a little bit, so we get some color on there. And then to stop it from looking like too many little lines, what I'm going to do is take a damp brush, dip it in the water, remove some of the excess water, dab it on a paper towel so I don't have too much water, and then I'm going to go ahead and try to soften some of those edges just by just barely touching it. Just like that. That is pretty nice. And this has a big white chest, so I just want to soften a few of those edges. I'm going to just touch it like that. Not much. Leave that alone. And then I'm going to go ahead and just go along the inside of our little hummingbird. Just a little bit like that. I don't want it to get too muddy. I'm just I'm gonna put a little line down like that. And since those hummingbirds go so fast, their wings look like little blurs. So let's just get a little bit in there, not much. And let's do the same thing over here. Hopefully that dried a little bit. And I'm gonna go from the outside in to give the impression of those little feathers. So I'm going to take, I can take the same brush, but I'm gonna take one that's a little bit larger like that, get it wet, remove some of the extra water, and then I'm gonna to touch the edges of the wings. I could even take a larger brush with clean water and touch those edges. I was thinking about uh, making a lot of things soft, but I like what's happening with the wings. I'll leave that alone. And what I'm uh, gonna do now is think about that really ruby red throat. So notice that I'm taking my brush, bringing it into the water, and actually putting a little water there, dipping it into my color. I'm not gouging it. I'm just touching my color, bringing it over here, and then let's test it. And let's go ahead, do that little technique. Just barely touching the paper. Now we've got a really ruby red throat. And then I also think there's a little red, I think there is a little red on the top of its head. So let's go ahead, not much. So since I don't want that to be the same color as that, I think what I'm gonna do is tone it down by taking my red color and dipping that a tiny bit into my gray. 
and then bring in it along the top. And I'm going to pull that color all the way out. I'm pressing and pulling because where I put my brush to the paper, it's going to be thicker and it's going to be thinner at the end of my stroke. And then just let the very tip of my brush touch the paper. That might even be too much color, so I need to remove some of that, otherwise he's going to have big giant feet, and I don't want that. And to make them stand out, I think I'm going to try to just hide the bottom of that line and touch the bottom, just like that. And I don't want, I want to leave a white space around his eye, but I don't want it to be so big. We'll just go around it like that. Do we want to go darker on the tummy? How about if we just bring a little bit of that? That might be a little too dark. Let's. And maybe I'll take some green in there. I like how it drools. So I do like this as is. But I'm thinking I could even make this more interesting by taking a little piece of tape. This is the washi tape, and it has a very low tack. I'm going to go back and forth with my brush a little bit there to get a tiny bit of detail. Oh, I like that. And now we have a wonderful hummingbird.